Okay, hello everybody. I'm gonna take a little time here and I'm gonna do a video showing you some of the grain that I have growing right now. It's not ripe yet, but I wanna show it to you. Um, Naomi and another gentleman on um, Telegram the other day asked me to do a video on grains. So I'm gonna do this one showing you some of the grains I'm growing. And then when it comes time to harvest, I will come back and show you that as well. So this first grain that I've got right here is rye. This is a special kind of rye that comes from Eastern Europe. These heads are, are really large. I mean, here's my hand next to these heads. It's a special kind of rye. I forget the name of it, but it comes from Eastern Europe and they use it, I think, for making vodka, if I'm not mistaken. But it's also a cereal rye. It can be used for making bread and everything. These tallest ones up here are, are probably seven foot tall. They're, they're a little taller than I am. So this has been really fun to grow. These stems are really sturdy and strong. I'm really looking forward to harvesting this. This will be ready first. This will start drying down here soon and turn golden. And then I that'll be one of the first things that I'll show you that that I harvest. Now this next thing, that's a lot shorter, is called matcha. Matcha is a ancient grain. This is actually going to be a, a grain that's harder to thresh. It's an ancient wheat and it doesn't grow very tall. And I'm usually not excited about growing grains that don't grow very tall. And the reason why is I actually want this really tall stem from these grains for composting because when it dries down it's going to be full of um, well lignified carbon which is going to make really good humus in my soil as I make compost. So but this matcha the thing that this is superior for is it's quite drought tolerant and it's really um it really performs well in harsh conditions. And as I get further along here, like you'll see this big open area here, this was two different varieties of wheat, winter wheat, that didn't make it. And what's amazing about that is w w when our snow melted off this spring, the we had such cold temperatures that hit after the snow melted off that it actually killed some of these varieties. These are actual winter wheat varieties. So the fact that the ones that survived, some of them are doing so well, I'm really excited about it because um, it's, it's really going to be nice to know that these varieties are so hardy. So now this next one, I, you wait till I show you this in a few weeks. This is black emmer, winter black emmer, and you can see it starting to turn a little black but in a few weeks these heads are actually going to turn black and it's a beautiful wheat and this is another ancient wheat and the thing about this this is hard to thresh i have a hammer mill that i can actually use that'll thresh it for me but um this is just beautiful thick healthy, lots of heads, and it withstood that super, super cold. And that's what I read about this, is that this is a very, very tolerant of um, harsh conditions. And that's that's exactly what, what it shows. Now, so you can see these two next areas here, um, they got wiped out from the cold. This next wheat here, I'm really excited about. In fact, um, the name that I got for the seed, uh, I've not been able to find it anywhere on the internet. I'm gonna have to contact the gentleman that I got this seed from. All this seed came in small packets. So that's why there's such small little, little trials is that I only got a small packet of everything to try. But this variety, I'll have to look at the name here. Let me see, I've got a tag right here. It's like Jacob Borstevity, something like that. And I think this one also came from Eastern Europe. But these heads, 
These heads are really large. That is big for a wheat head and very healthy, dark green leaves. I mean, this is some of the nicest wheat that I think I've ever grown. And this wheat has gone through the abuse of a very, very cold, nasty spring. So I'm really excited about that variety for the future. Now this one got burnt. This one is gone. It's no longer there. Now, just because a variety survives, if you look at this stand now, do you see how sporadic and thin it is? Just because the plants were able to take the cold doesn't mean that they'll end up producing a good harvest. So I will probably grow this again because the genetics might need to kind of work themselves out a little bit. Um, this might perform better next time. Um, you can see right here in the middle, look at that. That's more rye. Somehow when we transplanted, we did this in soil blocks. Somehow when we transplanted, we mixed up and put two groups of rye seedlings in here. So at any rate. So this next variety, same thing. This is just a wood chipped path, but this next variety here, it's kind of sparse and sporadic. You can see it doesn't have near the health and vitality that that other first wheat variety you saw back there that was so beautiful. Same thing here. So all these different varieties, these last three varieties, they all survived that radical cold, but they, they didn't produce a really heavy harvest. So I'll try them. I'll try each of these again, but I'm especially that Jacob variety. I'm especially going to be interested in seeing what it does in the future. So at any rate, growing grains is so simple. And just to give you a figure that you can think about, um, in a good harvest, kind of like this one variety over here, you're, you're looking at probably um, 10 pounds per 100 square feet of grain harvest. It could be a little more, it could be a little less. Um, with corn, you're looking at more like 15 to 17 pounds per 100 square feet, depending on the variety that you're growing. So wheat isn't as um, bountiful as corn, but it also is a lot more cold hardy. And with what we're learning about the grand solar minimum that's coming, um, it's interesting. I've been studying some of the history on it. And I saw a quote from Thomas Jefferson and he was talking about how the corn yields back in the early 1800s were just being just decimated and just a fraction of what they typically were. But he said the wheat, the wheat, um, the the grain harvest of wheat it wasn't big but the quality was exceptional so i found that interesting that during that time period of that summer where there wasn't a summer when they had that really really cold year back in the early 1800s the wheat and the rye and stuff were what really performed well so i'm really interested to continue to grow out some of these varieties as we head into these colder and colder years that there's that NASA and NOAA are telling us are coming. So at any rate, as we get closer to harvest here, I will show you what I do to harvest these. It's really so simple and it's so beautiful when you bundle them together and um, you see these heads all dried down. These, uh, Having these textures and colors and everything in the garden are really so nice. So at any rate, I hope this was helpful. If you've got any questions that this brings up listening to this, then please um, put them in the comments below and I'll make sure that as we talk more about grains that I answer them. God bless everybody. I hope you uh, have a good day. Bye.